say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Well, right now, right now I'm losing bad. Stood on the stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be alright. Right now. Right now, I just can't. It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I sing when I'm held to the flames like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you can. Save through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you alone They say it only takes a little faith To move a mountain Well, good thing A little faith it's all I have right now So God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable Please just give me the strength to be able to sing It is a way through the fire with your mighty hand but even if you don't my hope is you alone i know the sorrow and i know the hurt it would all go away if you would just say the word but even if you don't can be when you know God is able and that God can and that he will. Thank you so much for all the music this morning. Hadn't it been a blessing to your heart? It's been a blessing to mine and I trust it. It's exactly what we need to prepare our hearts for the preach word. Judges in the word of God. I said chapter 7. We'll be looking at chapter 7 but I'm going to give our text verse from chapter number 8. Judges chapter 8 and I've got to get through it so I'm going to Try to move quickly. Don't have long in me, but I got to get through it so we can preach the theme next week. So you listen. Some of it we'll have to summarize, and you can go read it this week, right? All right. You don't mind reading your Bible, do you? Amen. 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 Just give you some homework assignments. 
and uh, good to follow up in the Word of God. You can't get everything you need from preaching. Amen. Well, I, just, I, just, I need church this morning. I need something from God. You better read your Bible. You can't get everything from preaching. God, preaching will help you, but what it ought to do is just be like a little piece of bourbon chicken on a toothpick. And uh, boy, if, that, if it tastes that good on a toothpick, how good is it going to be on the whole plate? All right? So hopefully the preaching gives you enough to go fix a plate. Amen. And God, God will serve the meal you fix the plate. Judges chapter 8, one verse for our thought for 2021 on the first Sunday. And here it is, verse number 4. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over, he and the 300 men that were with him, faint, yet pursuing them. Faint, yet pursuing them. With the help of the Holy Spirit of God on this first Sunday in 2021, I want to preach on the thought, faint, yet pursuing. Father, would you help me? Cleanse me of sin, empty me of self, and fill me with your spirit. Help me to be a blessing. Hide me behind the cross of Christ. Use the Bible. The Bible. Use me because I'm preaching the Bible. To be a blessing to your people. To not just give us what we feel, but give us what we need. We love you. We thank you. If somebody doesn't know Jesus, might that one know that today salvation is in Jesus Christ. Bless now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. I can't go into detail about everything that was going on here in the book of Judges because time will not permit. But suffice it to say, we have Gideon and 300 men. It didn't start off with 300. Uh, it actually started off with over 20,000 and then went down to 10,000 and then went down to 300. And the amazing thing about these 300 men is that they were up against 135,000 men. Now, I'm not a betting man, and I don't think you should be a betting person. But I would say, if I were one, I would expect 300 to lose to 135,000, wouldn't you? And yet in the book of Judges, we find out that God did a great work. We find out that the reason why the 300 were able to defeat that army of 135,000 was not because they were smart, not because they were skilled, and not even because they were strong. They were able to win the battle because they were submitted to the will of God. And can I tell you, you're not going to win because you're smart. You're not going to win because you're skilled. You're not going to win because you're strong. But you cannot lose if you're submitted to the will of God. And so they did what God said with an interesting plan. They had trumpets in their hand and torches, and they talked very loud. And God allowed them, by screaming the words, the sword of the Lord of Gideon, and God allowed the army to be confounded and to flee and to turn on themselves and to defeat each other. And they went running away from Gideon and the men. You've got to imagine what a joy it must have been to win a battle that you knew could only be won through the power of God. Somebody say amen. The battle is not ours. It is the Lord's. In chapter number 8, they are continuing on the hills of that victory. God has done a miracle. Has anybody ever experienced a miracle of God? Some of you say, I've never experienced a miracle. Are you saved? Are you saved? Do you realize that for God to reach down to miry clay and to wash your sins away is a miracle? What baptism couldn't do, what church membership couldn't do, what good works couldn't do, what being born in a good family couldn't do, God did by, by not having you born again of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, that the Holy Ghost of God took your dead spirit and quickened it by the grace of God. You are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus said, don't rejoice that the devils are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written down in the Lamb's. This is not the message, but somebody ought to stop before I get going and thank God for the miracle when you got saved. So they were on the heels of a miracle. And yet they were 300 versus 135,000. They had not lost, but they had been in a battle. They had not been defeated, but they were certainly wounded, at least in spirit. They were not losers, but part of them felt like it. They had been through the ringer. They had gone through difficulty. They were physically exhausted. 
they had engaged in every bit of strenuous effort that they had in them. But the job wasn't done. Is anybody listening? The job wasn't, they were tired, but the job wasn't done. They were weary, but the job wasn't done. They were wounded, but the job wasn't done. They were depleted, but the job wasn't done. Uh, they, they, their heads were hanging low, and their, and their legs felt like they had no strength, but the job wasn't done. And I draw great comfort from the book of Judges chapter 8, verse number 5, because these same 300 men that God had used in chapter number 7 to experience a difficult victory that seemed insurmountable in the eyes of most people, and yet God gave them deliverance. This same 300 men in chapter number 8 decided, even though God has done great things, even though we have passed from one transition to the next, even though we've entered into chapter number 8 and we've exited chapter number 7, because the job's not done, because the mission is not fully accomplished, because there is still work that needs to be done, because God still has something for us to do. Yes, we're tired. Yes, we're weary. Yes, we're depleted. Yes, we feel like quitting. But we've made up our minds that even though we are faint, we're going to keep on pursuing. And I couldn't help but think, as we step into the house of God in 2021, Somebody in the building may think like you lost in 2020. Somebody in the building may feel like you got beat up in 2020. Somebody in the, in the building or somebody tuning in may feel like you've used up all of your strength in 2020. You've exhausted all of your resources. You just got your stimulus and it's gone already. And you're wondering, why didn't they do the 2000 and when they gonna do the next one? You say, it's nice I had it, but that's all they gonna give me. And some of you saying, Pastor, I'm hobbling. Some of you've been hit with some diseases and some of you've been uh, announced some bad news and some of you had some things happen on your job that, that got you walking on crutches emotionally. And maybe some of you, through what has happened in the world, are even crippled spiritually. Your walk with God has suffered a blow. Your Bible reading has become sporadic. Your prayer life has gotten stale. Your conversation has gotten carnal. Your giving has been hit and miss, and you feel like quitting and not going on. Well, I have brought a word to you that God gave me yesterday from Judges chapter 8. Ain't nothing wrong with being faint as long as you don't stop pursuing. I'm saying to Crossroads Baptist Church, this is a new year. The calendar turned from one December into another January. The clock struck and came to another year. Our phones updated. Our computers updated. The calendars updated. We're using different checkbooks, getting used to writing 2021 on my tithes and offerings this morning. But I want to tell you, the year may have changed, but God is still the same. The year may be different, but he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And guess what happened between December 31 and January 1? Nothing when it pertains to lost souls. They still need to be saved. Nothing when it comes to the devil. He's still a liar and a murderer and the father of lies. Nothing when it comes to holiness and righteousness and God's expectation. Listen to me. Your checkbook may have changed, but forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven and in earth, and not one jot or tittle moved in between 1159 and 12 a.m. We still got to be Christians. We still got to be soul winners. We still got to be givers. We still got to raise our kids. We still got to lead our families. We still got to worship. We still got to pray. We still got to fight the devil. We still got to talk right and think right and dress right and live right. And somebody says, preacher, I'm faint. I'm tired. I'm discouraged. I'm depleted. I'm telling you the strength doesn't come from yourself. It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good play. I can't do it. You never could do it. I hear people say, I can't do it anymore. You never were doing it. The moment you started doing it, no wonder you run out of gas. But when God does it, it is he that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good play. I'm saying you got to pick up those feeble knees you got to lift up that hanging head. you got to poke that chest out and determine that God is for you. Who can be against you? You are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And my friend, nothing ought to be able to stop you. I'm saying the power of God is still available, but he's looking for somebody that is faint yet pursuing. And let me give you four factors, and it's going to come like boom, 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 and boom. But I want you to think about it this week. Four factors involved when you're faint yet 
pursuing. Number one, supernatural favor. Somebody say amen. How did we get to this point? That this is what they had to do. Now, I don't have time to look back in Judges chapter 7 when the Midianites were assembled and God allowed his people to be in captivity to the Midianites. The Midianites raided people of their crops and, and took from them and treated the people of God like they were nothing. Formerly, God's people had defeated Midian, but when they started disobeying God, God let Midian defeat them. Let me tell you something. Things you used to lose to will start conquering you when you start saying no to God. Stuff you used to win easily now will be, beat you easily when you stop obeying God's word. Don't you think you've been saved so long you don't have to walk with God? you got to walk with God. I don't care how long you've been saved. It is still the power of God. But yet here comes the enemies, and they're, they're surrounded around him. And yet they had to have an accurate recollection of what had happened in chapter 6. They had to have an acknowledged reality of what happened in chapter 7. God used 300 men as an army. Can you imagine when they went to 10,000, still 135,000 to 10,000? and yet God said, y'all got too many. How can we have too many when we're outnumbered by 125,000? Sometimes God wants you to get small so he can be big. Sometimes God wants you to be weak so that he can be strong. You say, I thought he's always strong and he's always big. Yeah, but it takes your weakness and your smallness so that his bigness and his strength can be seen. You may not like being small, but it's about time you were okay with being small so God could be big. And by the way, he's been good at being big a long time. Amen? So they had to have an accurate recollection of his favor. They had to have an acknowledged reality of his favor. And the actual results of his favor, verse 22 through 25, they won the battle. You know, if it's not careful, if we're not careful, we will get so focused in on our problems that we forget our prosperity. We're so focused in on everything bad that happened that we forget what good, what good happened. When they were faint, you know what they needed? They needed to rem remember. Guess what? We won in chapter number seven. God showed him chapter number seven. Listen to me. We can remember a lot about 2020 that wasn't good. But this morning, instead of talking about everything bad that happened in 2020, let's talk about the mountains that God moved. Let's talk about the valleys that God exalted. Let's talk about every day God woke you up and he kept clothes on your back and food on your table. Let's talk about the fact you started on January 1 and went to December 31st and all the times you sinned, you never lose, lost your salvation. Let's talk about the fact you didn't have to put brand new mercies in your account that God deposited them for you. Let's talk about your families that God sustained. Let's talk about the fact that we're sitting in a church building in 2021 when a lot of people didn't make it. Let's talk about the fact that the pastor got delivered by the grace of God. Let's talk about the fact that Pastor Mike is still here and God's still sustaining our people. Let's talk about the fact that although Crystal and her family had a loss, that she's been able to sense God and that she's here in church this morning deciding to worship the Lord. You go ahead and write up a bad summary of 2020. Why don't you put God on the summary? Because through it all, we have experienced his favor. Somebody say amen. When you're faint yet pursuing, you've got to have factor number one, God's supernatural favor. But here's something else that will surface when you're faint yet pursuing. Not only supernatural favor, number two, shady friends. Now watch this now. Gideon and the 300 guys is a staggering. I can imagine that they're walking and just worn out from the battle. And, and they cross over from chapter 7 into chapter number 8. And before they can even breathe good, here comes Ephraim and said, remind you now, Ephraim in chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, jumped in and helped. But in chapter 8, their complaint to Gideon is this. Why didn't you call us before the battle started? You know what you're going to find out when you're wounded and trying to do right? Do right. You're going to find out some people you thought were your friends are not your friends. And they're going to come with some stipulated recognition. In other words, we're not, it's not enough that you won. We want attention. We want credit. Now, now we, we're coming out of 2020 and 2021, and, and you're going to get a call from somebody that said, I heard you got sick last year. Why you ain't called me? Is that all you want to that, are you just mad that I didn't let you know what my problems were? Or are you glad that God delivered me? Shady friends. In, in verse number five, he makes a sincere request. He moves on uh, from those of Ephraim. And by the way, he says to them, are you really complaining about what I didn't call you? God used you to help us get deliverance. Shouldn't you be happy about it? But he kept on moving from them. Verse number five, he approaches the men of Succoth and says, hey, look, we're weary. Could you please give us some bread? 
Verse number six, the princes of Succoth said, are the hands of Zeba and Zalmona now in thine hand that we should give you bread unto thine army? In other words, uh, is, is the battle over yet? We, we ain't gonna feed you till you officially win. The sincere request was met with a selfish response. Here he's talking to people that should have been willing to help him. He asked for bread, and their stipulation is, we'll only give you bread if you're fully completed in the battle. How many know that people sometimes don't want to help you till you're already done? Have you ever gotten a call from somebody and said, you still need help? You said, uh, yeah, like three hours ago. And th th listen, you you're going to find out that some of your friends are only friends when you don't need them. Come on now. You heard uh, Dad used to tell that story about Rufus and whatever his name was. I can't remember the story, but it was a good one, Dad. But anyway, the, the, the moral of the story was I'll offer you anything I don't have. But I ain't going to offer you. Don't ask me for something I actually have. He asked for that, was it the cow or the mule or something? He said, man, don't ask me for something I have. You know, you ever hear people say, man, no matter what you do, down and out, man, I got your back. Yeah, they got your back until you need them to get it. And this is what happens with the men of Succoth, their selfish response. Gideon gives them a straightforward reply. When I'm done winning the battle, not if I'm done, when I'm done, I'm going to come back and deal with you. And by the way, when you face friends who put strings attached on whether they'll help you, some people will only help you if you let them do it their way. They're not, they're not excited that God is helping you. They want the credit for help. You let them know, I don't have time to fool with you, but after God gives me the victory, I'll be back to see you. Somebody say amen. Supernatural favor, shady friends. Number three, a sustained focus. Verse number 10, those men at Succoth are getting on his nerves, but they're not the enemy. Gideon could not afford to stop and fight them because the real enemies were Zeba and Zalmunna and the people of Midian. Watch this now. If you're not careful in 2021, while you're faint, y'all heard me talk about temptation, halt, H-A-L-T, the times you're most likely to give into temptation, when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, halt. Well, you're, you're likely to fall prey to temptation when you're wounded, and now all of a sudden you're wounded and somebody gets on your nerve. So you stop fighting the enemy because you're fighting the person that gets on your nerve. You know what you're going to have to say? You're getting on my nerves. I don't have time to fight you. I got to fight the real enemy. After I defeat them, I'll come back to you by getting on my nerves. Anyway, you're going to have to keep focused. Sustain your folks. We have an enemy, but it's not each other. You have an enemy, but it's not the person that makes a comment on social media that doesn't agree with you. You have an enemy, but it is not somebody of a different political party. You have an enemy, but it's not somebody that you don't like. You have an enemy, but it's not somebody who said something about you to somebody. You have an enemy, but it's not even your haters. Listen to me. They may get on your nerves, but you cannot stop fighting the enemy because people get on your nerves. There are clear enemies, and there must be a critical endeavor. We've got to defeat Midian. And shame on us this year if we spend time debating about foolishness and fickle things with each other when we should be fighting the devil. The devil wants our children. He wants our marriages. We don't have time to be talking back and forth nonsense and two cents worth on the internet and talking about this person and that person. And I heard they did this and mm, I don't believe it's going. Let me tell you something. We've got a lying devil who wants to sift us as we, Jesus says he's prayed for us to strengthen the brethren. Listen to me. Don't you let the devil get you fighting with your spouse, young man. Don't you let the devil get you fighting your husband, family. Don't you let the devil get you fighting with your children, fighting with another church member, all messed up on the job because the boss doesn't understand you and this, that, and the other. Listen to me. you got to stay focused on your enemies and your endeavor. Folks are going to hell. The word of God is under attack. Righteousness is going down the drain. Truth is falling in the streets. Some Christian people in 2021 need to throw up the white flag with each other and go on the attack mode with the devil. And then lastly, and I'm done. Supernatural favor, shady friends, sustained focus, and a successful finish. There's so much in here. <clears throat> Verse number 11 and 12. He discomfited all of the host, the completed process. <laughs> he finished all. There were 15,000 that escaped from chapter number seven. And there were still folks that need to be defeated. By the way, that's how we know it was 135,000, right? Verse number 10 of chapter number eight, for there fell 120,000 by the sword. 
at the end of verse number 10, but 15,000 men were left. You know, the Bible's not as complicated as we make it sound. Sometimes it just requires simple math. 120,000 plus 15,000, 135,000. I don't understand the Bible. If you put much effort into it as you do in social media, you might understand, especially with the help of the Holy Ghost of God. God's trying to tell us, I didn't give you a book so you couldn't understand it. I gave you a book so you'd take it and lean on me to illuminate your eyes to be able to understand it. So you got 15,000 left. They've got to deal with the 15,000. Gideon did deal with the 15,000. And here's what happens at the end of all of this story, verse number 28. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more, and the country was in quietness 40 years in the days of Gideon. Completed process leads to consequential peace. Do you want some quietness? Quietness. Every once in a while, my wife would finish homeschooling the four, and this was before uh, quarantine and all that, and I'd, and I'd come home from work, and I'd be walking in, she'd be walking out. Now, don't she ain't pass gold and collect $200. Now, just, I mean, I'm coming in the door, hey, honey, I need some peace and quiet. <laughs> You've been in that room all day long for four subjects, you need some peace and quiet. Well, honey, what you, where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> Up out of here. I don't know about you, coming out of 2020, don't you feel like you need some peace and quiet? You don't get it until you submit to God and God helps you defeat the enemy. Do, do you think that you can manufacture peace? Do you think that you can create peace? That's, that's a problem to people of God. We've taken the principles of the word of God that can only be secured through the plan of God and we've tried to manufacture them in the flesh. You cannot make up peace you can drink something, smoke something, and it can make you feel peace. It won't last. The peace of God passes all understanding. Why? You can't explain it. It's a God thing. And it comes when God gives you the power to defeat your enemies through him and him alone. Are you faint today? Of course. 2020 has rendered us all faint. But I hope that there's something in you this morning that says, Pastor, I may be faint, but I am yet pursuing. Don't quit. There's work to be done. And I firmly believe, as crazy as it may sound, that we are getting ready to walk in some of the greatest days of Christianity that we have ever experienced. It doesn't mean they're going to be easy, but I believe God is going to give us a chance to do some things for him before Jesus comes that we've never gotten done. And he can't do it with a bunch of quitters. But by God's grace, you keep pursuing. We will win. God always wins. Father, thank you. Thank you for your precious word the opportunity we have to gather around it. Heads bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around. How many say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. If you know that, would you raise your hand? I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. You put your hands down. How many say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I'm faint. And God is challenging me to keep pursuing. Would you put your hand up? Come on. I want to keep pursuing. Quit, Christian. Don't quit. Don't quit, young person. Don't quit, single adult. Don't quit, seasoned saint. Anybody else in the building today would say, Pastor, I'm not 100% sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. But I don't want to go to hell. Would you pray for me? Anybody like that? I'm not sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven, but I'm sure I don't want to go to hell. Anybody like that? Would you let me pray for you? Anybody like that? Why don't you pause right where you are and ask the Lord for strength and grace to keep pursuing. See, I'm scared. That's all right. I don't know how it's going to work. You didn't in chapter number seven. You haven't since you got in seven. He's always come through. But how is he going to use you if you quit? Just, just keep the pedal to the metal. 
Say, God, I'm going to get up every day and keep, I'm going to get back at it. I don't have all the answers. I don't, I don't know how it's all going to happen. But I'm going to keep pursuing. Father, thank you for your precious word. I pray that it's helped us, that it will continue to sustain us. Please, God, help us to do our part so that you can keep doing yours. You don't need us, but we need you. Give us a great week, we pray, in Jesus' name and for his sake. And all God's children said,